What is up guys, today we have a super awesome release of iOS 13.5 coming out and also um, watchOS 6.2.5, which has some interesting features. And this is likely the last version of iOS 13 that we'll see until after things get started with iOS 14 beta. So a pretty important release here. Just to let you guys know, this is a GM version for developers only, but we'll likely see a public release either tomorrow, which is Tuesday or even Wednesday. Now, if you guys are stoked for iOS 13.5 and you're looking forward to iOS 14 and that entire beta process, Process, definitely get subscribed to the channel for more content on iOS 14 in the near future. And also check out developer beta perks in the channel membership link down below to see how you can make your iOS 14 beta experience as smooth and immersive as possible. There's also access to things like exclusive wallpapers and more perks. So check it out. You won't want to miss out on all of that. Okay, so back to iOS 13.5. And there's definitely a lot going on here as far as new features and changes go. So let's check them out. Okay, so first things first, we have a new build number that is 17F75, and the total update size for my iPhone 11 Pro Max was 4.13 gigabytes, so a pretty hefty update here. As far as modem firmware goes, it's uh, different from what we saw before, a pretty major upgrade here. It's 1.06.00, again, for my iPhone 11 Pro Max or newer devices, and that will likely improve LTE issues and Wi-Fi issues as well, so definitely check that out if you were having any problems on previous versions of iOS. Uh, this may fix those issues with LTE and Wi-Fi. Now let's move on to some other new features and changes found within iOS 13.5. Okay, so we'll go into the finer details here, settings app, general, and then about, and you can see we have a new software version, and we also have a new build number as well for iOS 13.5. Now, if we scroll down into this menu just a little bit further, you can see we have new modern firmware, that's 1.06.00, that has been updated and should be uh, providing a lot better LTE connectivity. I know Wi-Fi was fixed in the last update for iOS 13.4, so it looks like we should should be getting a little bit better connectivity with this new modem firmware. Now, another thing I wanted to add, if you have a AirPods Pro device, you now have a new update. This is not specific to iOS 13.5, so you don't have to update to iOS 13.5. It's just since iOS 13.4, Apple has released new firmware for AirPods Pro. So if you go into the about menu and then down to your AirPods Pro that are connected, you can see all of the information about that device, but the most important information is firmware version. That's what we're talking about today. So we have a new firmware version, it's 2D15. So go ahead, just connect your AirPods to your device. Make sure that your AirPods are currently charging, and then you can go ahead and um, update your AirPods. It will happen all in the background, so just leave your phone on, leave your AirPods um, on and charging, and the update will come through in the background. There's no specific way to activate it, but once it's uh, connected to power and it's connected to your phone, the AirPods will go ahead and update automatically. Now, specifically for the AirPods Pro, it looks like connectivity is a lot better here, so this firmware version does improve on connectivity. And also I've noticed that a lot of the bugs that were happening before, um, you know, software bugs, uh, basically the connection between the iPhone and the AirPods Pro and how that functions, I noticed that is a lot better as well. So definitely go ahead and update to this latest firmware version. It fixes a lot of the complaints that were uh, being made about the AirPods Pro and its firmware that it was running. Okay, so a new feature specific to iOS 13.5 is if you open up Apple Music and you have an Apple Music subscription, you can now share your Apple Music that you're currently listening to to Instagram stories. So the way to do this is just go into the Apple Music subscription that you have. Unfortunately, I can't give you a full demonstration because I do not have it on my device, um, but you can uh, follow along in these instructions. So if I go to a song that I'm currently playing, um, I can tap on the three little dots there. And if you have an Apple Music subscription, you can go ahead and share it. That share will be located in this menu. Once you tap on share, you can select the Instagram app and that will immediately share it to your Instagram story. Now, for those of you who have pages, keynote, and numbers, there is an update for you guys. So there is an update for all of these apps. It has come in in the past couple of weeks. So make sure to update. It does have some iCloud uh, kind of improvements that will improve how your, uh, your apps, like keynote, pages, and numbers, will interact with iCloud, and it'll just be a little bit more efficient. 
Now, if you go into the settings app and then you go all the way down to the FaceTime menu, you can see at the bottom here, we do have a new speaking tab. So automatic prominence means that uh, whilst you are on a FaceTime call, whoever is speaking will show up the biggest in the tile. So if you're on a group chat, um, the largest tile will be the one currently speaking. So this is new to FaceTime. Unfortunately, we don't have any eye correction coming back to iOS 13 that will likely be saved to iOS 14, but it looks like Apple has added this new feature specifically because of what's going on in the world right now and so many people taking advantage of FaceTime. And this is a feature that Zoom has, and it's nice to see that um, they have added this to FaceTime because obviously the person speaking should have uh, kind of a bigger picture if you're on a group chat. Now, the next new feature is also found in the settings app, and this is the reason for iOS 13.5. Originally, iOS 13.4.5 was set to be released with very minor updates, but because of the pandemic that's been going on, Apple created a tracing program, and they had to implement that into iOS 13.5 because they had a new API. So for that, you go into the privacy menu, go into the health section, and then go to teen exposure logging. Now, if you go into this menu, before there was an option, there was a toggle to turn this on or off, and you eventually will have that option. But unfortunately, right now, uh, no country has actually approved the use of this program between Apple and Google. So uh, right now, you don't have an option to turn that on or off because it's not available in my current country, as you can see at the very top there. But when it does become active, you will have a toggle that you can select from, whether you want to um, basically participate in that notification program. Now, another new advancement is in Face ID and Passcode. So now if you are wearing a mask and you are uh, trying to activate your Face ID device, you can now just swipe up from the bottom and it will go immediately to your passcode to enter your passcode in manually versus trying to continuously scan your face. So with what's going on in the world right now, that is a very good feature to have. And I doubt that will be carried on for a very long time, but just for now, Apple has kind of updated how Face ID will work while you guys currently have mask on out in public. Now, also in the settings app, if you go down into the health menu and then you go to your medical ID, there's actually more options here. So at the very bottom, you can see we have the emergency access tabs and you can have the uh, information, your medical ID showing when your iPhone is locked. So any medical personnel can see you know, all your stats, but there's also a share during emergency call feature. So if you go ahead and enable that, it will share your information during an emergency call. So they'll actually have that information readily available to them before they arrive to you. This also works on calls with your Apple Watch as well. So both on your phone and Apple Watch, that information will be sent directly to the emergency call service uh, so that you have they have that information preemptively before arriving for your emergency. Okay, so another thing that I noticed specific to the iPhone SE was that performance was really poor on iOS 13.4. And by performance, I mean that the A13 Bionic chip was just using way too much power and was way overloading the device. The battery was getting hot and it just seemed like battery life was not at all of any importance to the A13 Bionic chip on the iPhone SE. And now with iOS 13.5, Looks like that has been scaled back a little. The performance is a lot more efficient. I'm not getting um, you know, the battery on the backside getting so hot. And it looks like the battery performance has improved just a little bit and we'll be talking about that in just a little bit when we move on to battery life for all of the devices that we've tested with iOS 13.5. Now also with the iPad Pro and the new Magic Keyboard, it looks like that process or that hardware device has been optimized now uh, for the use with the iPad Pros. So it looks like the trackpad has gotten just a little bit better. I didn't know it could actually get better. The trackpad experience, in my opinion, was very, very smooth, but it actually has gotten better um, after updating to iOS 13.5. So the trackpad is a lot smoother, the gestures are smoother, and um, so far the typing experience is just the same, which was near perfect. So I'm really liking um, the software improvements that Apple has been making to this Apple keyboard and the iPhone SE. These are brand new products um, that just needed a few tweaks to make them uh, near perfect use. So kudos to Apple for doing that. And it looks like this should carry us over at least until iOS 14 in the next month or so. 
Now in watchOS 6.2.5, there's actually new um, watch faces available. So if you go into the watch face gallery, um, let's go all the way to the right here, we have a gradient and you can actually select a um, rainbow gradient. So as you can see at the top there, um, or going around the uh, watch face here is our seconds. So that will be in gradient form just going around. So that looks pretty cool. And then we also have an added uh, pride uh, watch face here as well. So if we go and customize this, you can see um, that go all, to, all the way to the left here, um, we have our circular and full screen. And then we can also swipe to the right here and we have the 2020 version and the 2019 version. So two versions here, 2019, and this is what we'll be seeing for 2020. Now also back to the gradient and we do have different styles here. So you can select which styles you want to have uh, for the different gradient styles that you uh, choose from. We have rainbow, red, orange, um, and tons of different colors here. They're almost endless. Um, so definitely go check them out. But the new one that we have here um, is the rainbow that was uh, added along with the pride. But there's a ton of styles here. You can of course go full screen or circular and then have um, some tools there on the uh, corners. So this is actually some pretty cool looking watch faces here and that gradient will probably flow into iOS 14 as we see that in the next month or so. Okay, so those were a few new features and changes that we saw in iOS 13.5, and I'd actually love to get your opinion on what the best feature is and why. So definitely leave those answers in the comment section down below. I'd love to know what you all think about those new features and changes. So moving on, we've gone over new features and changes. Let's get into the performance side of things. Performance is especially important because iOS 14 is right around the corner and the performance we see on our devices with iOS 13.5 is maybe going to have to last us all the way up until the official release of iOS 14 for those who don't participate in the betas. So with that said, performance is actually very, very good right now. I noticed that the CPU processes seem to be a little bit more efficient and streamlined, so loading times aren't as long for apps. And then also the GPU has been worked on to provide a really smooth yet still fast UI experience. Now, one thing that I will say about the UI experience is I didn't think that this late in the iOS 13 lifecycle that you could visually see better performance when using my iPhone or even my 2018 iPad Pro, but it is there and it's quite impressive. So if you guys do update, do expect to see some better performance in the UI of iOS 13.5, both on iPadOS and iOS as well. Okay, so that was performance. Let's chat a little bit about battery life. Like the performance side of things, this is the battery performance that we'll likely be working with for quite some time. And to be quite honest, I think Apple has done a fantastic job and you are very good hands with this update. Battery performance for my iPhone 11 Pro Max, iPhone SE, and iPhone 8 Plus has increased across the board with this update. And I could not be happier with this type of battery life them to getting out of these devices. Seems like the CPU and GPU processes have really been worked on here to operate more efficiently and also to provide even more speed to your phone. So with this update, you are definitely getting the best of both worlds here and there are no complaints from me on battery life or battery performance. Okay guys, so that was the official release of iOS 13.5. And if you have any questions or comments about this update, please leave those in the comment section down below. But if you want to get the update for yourself, check out the software update page likely tomorrow or Wednesday for the public version. If you guys are excited to see iOS 14 updates in the near future, don't forget to get subscribed and hit that bell icon so you can get updates on when that content is released. Also check out channel memberships. Those are now live and have a ton of awesome perks for you guys. More information on that can be found by clicking the join button down below or checking out the link in the video description for channel memberships. Anyways, guys, thank you all for watching today's update and hopefully I'll be seeing you in some future content. Until then, I hope you all have an awesome day and are enjoying iOS 13.5.